those Adam, those, where is he? Adam, Adam, where are you? <laughs> All right. The special candidates who are serving this mass, do they also belong to the third grade? Yes. All right. Thank you. How special it is to see them, you know, carrying the candle. In fact, I sympathize with the little one who carried the book for me. And of course, those who serve, they normally don't carry the book for that long. But the little child, I just looked at her the way she was, you know, carrying the book. And God gave her the strength to be able to withstand till the end. Thank God. Thank you, too. And how wonderful it is to find these little ones around the, the, the altar of the Lord serving the community. And looking at them, I was just picturing what um, little poor Isaac was doing, carrying the woods, carrying the lamp, and carrying uh, probably even, uh, who knows, carrying the knife and everything that was going to be used to, to slaughter him and to offer him as holocaust. And the poor Isaac didn't know. He didn't. But the father listened to the commands of the Lord, to the word of the Lord, and carried him. Now, I must tell you that it wasn't, it wasn't easy. Who, who here thinks that it was easy for, 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 for Abraham? Do you think it was easy? My father told me it wasn't easy. He's Abraham. <laughs> it's not easy. When you think about how long Abraham waited to have a son, you know it wasn't easy. When you think about how anxious Abraham was to have God fulfill his own part of the you know, covenant, then you know, you realize it wasn't easy. Do you know that Sarah, the wife of Abraham, had to even make his slave girl to sleep with Abraham in order to have a child so God's promise can come to pass? But that was not the plan of God. And Abraham was frustrated. Ishmael will not be the one. So what is going to happen? Abraham waited. Sarah was, you know, was no longer able to conceive. And Abraham was you know, weak, well on in years, and so on and so forth. So... And now that the Lord has visited Abraham and Sarah, and they have a child, and this child just was growing up, and Abraham was full of anxiety. Oh, let nothing happen to this child, so the, the commands, the, 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 the covenant I have with God will get fulfilled. All of a sudden, boom, God says, sacrifice him. Ah, ah. No. And you think that Abraham was not worried? You think that as a human being, he never felt it. You think that he, he didn't feel that God, what a hell of a God do you think you are? What do you think you are? How can you ask me to do this? How can you ask me to prepare this child that you have, I mean, to wake up early and, uh, and make all the sacrifices? How do you expect me to be bringing my child every Wednesday for, 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 for religious education? How do you expect me? What about my work? What about other stuff? And all that. All these things that you ought to do for these little ones. For the sake of these little ones. Mothers, you know it. Fathers, you know it. It is never easy. Could Abraham not have said, God, give me a break? <laughs> Well, the story is being written and being presented in such a way that it was like it was so easy. And if it were so easy, this is actually where, you know, Abraham's faith, you know, is being highlighted. His deep connection with God is being highlighted. So Abraham journeys three days journey to get to the Mount of Moriah, Right? So he had all the time to change his mind. Perhaps he was perplexed. God, the big guy, asked me to do this. And he jumps to it and he's, 
I mean, three days he was journeying with this poor little boy. He had time to reflect on it. And the three days journey also meant that he was consistently ready to obey, to listen to the voice of God. And that is how we should be consistent as people who have come to appreciate God in our lives. And speaking also to the third graders who have accepted the Lord, who have accepted the commands of the Lord, who have accepted baptism, you have accepted the Holy Eucharist because you received that last year or so. Now you are on this journey. And your catechists are doing a lot to keep you on this journey. You will need to maintain your focus and stay on. The parents, you will need to continue to watch them and to supply all that is morally and spiritually needed for them to grow up. Abraham stood firm and went up. Who can imagine the face of Abraham when he was tying up you know, uh, binding his own son. Who can imagine how he, what, what must have been his inner experience as he was doing that? What about his facial exp expression? Can you, if you're an artist, can you paint a picture of Abraham and the way his face was when he was doing that? It was not easy, and this is why, at the end of the day, the angel of the Lord will speak and say, Abraham, Abraham, look, you are a great man. You are truly a friend of God. You are truly a servant of the Lord. You are truly God's own right-hand man. Because you could, you did not withhold anything from God, even your beloved son. But again, this very practice of Abraham to not withhold even his beloved son is also what scriptures is trying to use to tell us about the fatherhood of God to each and every one of us. The one who has only one beloved son and was ready to give him for us, to suffer and die for us. And that is precisely what that story of Abraham is also picturing. That Abraham is able to do it. And he's able to do it because God has commanded. He followed the commands of God. And God himself is asking Abraham to do not what he will not be able to do, but what he's able to do. He gave his son and he died for love of you and I. It is precisely what St. Paul is saying in that second reading, his letter to the Romans, when he says, if God did not spare the life of his only beloved and begotten son, what else will he not do for you and for me? He will do every other thing. When I read, when I read that uh, second reading, what was hitting on my heart was, the, 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 the words of the psalmist, Psalm 23. Who among the third graders knows what Psalm 23 says? Psalm 23. No, 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 I'm talking about the third graders. <laughs> Psalm 23, who knows? If you know your child, do you know? You don't know it. If you know your child is here, who has your mom and your dad here? Let me see your hands. Okay, if you are a parent and you know what Psalm 23 says, can you raise your hand? You, your child is here and you know Psalm 23. Oh, don't fail. No, 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 no. no. The parents, where are you? Are you there? Do you know Psalm 23? Okay, which of the parents knows? Okay. Okay, you know. All right, stand up, stand up. Stand up. All right, now say Psalm 23, first stanza. Say it louder. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Thank you very much. Is there anyone here who does not know Psalm 23? Everybody knows now. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
when I read that reading, St. Paul saying, if God does not even spare his own son but gives him up for us, then what will he not do? The Lord is our shepherd and there is nothing we shall want. And so when Jesus, uh, the voice, you know, that came forth from the cloud on the mountain of the Lord, Mount Tabor, Mount Tabor when the voice came up, behold, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Those words should come to hit us straight in our hearts that we truly should, you know, exercise ourselves, our docility, our humility to open ourselves up to what God is saying to us. This Abraham did very well by listening to the voice of God and what God had to say. The last word I'm going to leave you with is, suppose Abraham who was way 100, did not listen carefully to God. What would he have done? If he did not listen attentively, he would have struck the child. Do you think about that? Children of God, third graders, those below them, the youths, adults, Men, women, elderly, and so on, we are all called to be attentive to the Lord. If Abraham, old as he was, listened um, up to a point, tied the child, and did not listen you know, to the Lord at every moment, he wouldn't have heard, Abraham, Abraham, please do not strike the child. Please look, there is something else that you need to use to sacrifice. He would have killed the child. Do you think? Do you really think that God wanted Abraham to kill his child? Do you think so? God never wanted Abraham to kill a human being, a child. May we listen to the voice of God crying and telling us to defend these little ones, including the unborn. <laughs>